Hello pigeon flyers. A um, couple individuals on my pigeon site uh, were asking, requesting for videos of how to attach pigeon whistles as well as how to make pigeon whistles. So I wanted to do a little video here first on how to attach pigeon whistles. When I first started putting pigeon whistles on, I was uh, using these Chinese whistles. You can see they're very decorative. This one has a phoenix on it. This one's got a little yin yang sign. Very artistic the way they they make their whistles. And uh, nowadays they're making them out of you know a little stronger composites. In the old days they were just out of out of wood. And the problem was is that when your pigeon would take a bath, water would get down in the sound hole and eventually kind of delaminate these things. They they wouldn't last very long. So, the way the Chinese advise putting on the pigeon whistles is, depending upon the size of the hole on the shaft, they would either use, you know, a toothpick to go in, or a, uh, a match, and then trim the match. And the difficulty I was having was, you know, I was paying six or eight dollars for a whistle, and the whistles were falling off. And so I was like, yeah, we're not going there. That's, that's a waste of money. And so here's how they would do it with their, their style. There's you know, a little larger hole. So we shove a, shove a match in there. And you know, even with the feather, there was still just too much wiggle room for me. Eventually this thing, you know, in the loft, the bird flying, this thing's gonna wiggle down the shaft. And of course, you know, they, they wouldn't leave all that overhang. I trim it off like that, but and I suppose you could you could glue it, but still I didn't I didn't care for the system. Oh and by the way, this represents a pigeon rump, and these are the two central deck feathers on a pigeon, if you haven't figured that out yet. I'm, I'm sure you have. You're all intelligent people. So anyhow, um, this is a system that I designed. Uh, it's made out of airplane balsa, but I do seal it with a cyanoacrylate glue, so it's waterproof. And a cyanoacrylate glue is just a fancy term for a modeling glue, a super glue, and uh, and it does make you know balsas pretty light and flimsy, as you all know, and it, it really makes this balsa a lot sturdier. And so you can see there's two channels on each side, and that's where your two central deck feathers run down those channels. And then there's that, that bottom platform to hold it in so there isn't any uh, vertical wiggle room. And then I placed a little notch in the back. And what that notch is for is there's uh, one of the, small, the smallest Radio Shack wire tie that you can purchase. That wire tie that fits down into that notch and that kind of secures the uh, feather from sliding up and you know irritating the pigeon's rump. We want these pigeons to be as comfortable as possible with these whistles or anything else that we attach to them. And so anyways you would spread you would spread the pigeons uh, two deck feathers a bit and uh, since you got a lot of tail covert feathers here you you kind of want to feel, you know, where that bumps up. You really don't want the whistle bumping up and touching the rump and, and causing an irritation. You, you know, you want to back it off about an eighth inch. And then you want to put that, that wire tie on there. Pull it down. And I like the wire tie. I like that little box to be on the underside when I pull a taunt. And when I'm holding a pigeon, I usually use my index finger nail to push on the bottom of that. 
You know, you got to be aware when you're when you're pulling that taunt that you're not going to slip and, and pull the pigeon's tail feathers out by accident. You know, you want to give the pigeon good support and realize what you're doing at the time. So I want to get my notch lined up and, and pull that down pretty pretty tight. What you don't want to do is pull that wire tie so tight as to crush the inside of the feather. You know, when you open up those feathers, the inside has got kind of that porous, almost like styrofoam inside. And if you do pull that wire tie down too tight, you know you're gonna you're gonna make the feathers. Uh, kind of split like that you're gonna you're gonna crush them there's just too much compression there so you want it tight enough to hold the whistle on but not so tight as to to uh, compress or crush those feathers another thing you want to do is um, the left deck feather of a pigeon always lays over the top of the right and so you want the pigeons you know you want them to be comfortable you want to make sure before you pull this wire tie down nice and tight. You want to make sure that the left feather, the top of it, is overlaid on top of the right. That's that's just the way pigeons were made. And then of course you wouldn't want them flying flying around with this antenna hanging down so you, you want to clip that off. You also want to make sure that any of the undertail coverts covering their vent feathers aren't you know being pulled down uh, underneath the wire tie. If they are, you, you ought to trim them because otherwise when they're uh, trying to take a poop, uh, it's going to get all clogged up in their vent feathers. And of course, that might make you think about, well, when the birds are breeding, no, their whistles are uh, taken off before they're breeding because you can imagine the problems of a cock trying to mount a hen with a whistle on the back. It's wouldn't be a good deal and um, I'll get on on my other video uh, when I show you how to make them you know for the guy who just wants a uh, whistle for the sound effect you know you can just uh, I'll let you know what the best composite epoxy product is that I found for making them it sets up in uh, 10 minutes and so you can just leave them white. Um, my daughter, she likes, you know, glittery colors and all that. And so I started experimenting. And uh, it was, these, are, these are really quite simple to enhance. What I did was I just took Sharpie markers and just colored them with Sharpie markers. This was kind of a raspberry color. This one's kind of a light cobalt cerulean blue and uh, once I colored it with the <clears throat> sharpie I just mix up <clears throat> excuse me some uh, five minute epoxy modeling epoxy and pour some glitter in it mix it all up and brush it on but you need to do all that before you cut the sound hole you don't you don't want to have the have it at the uh, base stage, cut the sound hole, because what that does is it changes what's called the laminar airflow over the front. You need to get your your whistle sounding right uh, with, you know, the if you want uh, glitter, glitter epoxy finish on it. But actually, I, I've kind of liked these finishes because what it's allowed me to do is identify individual birds, because. Uh, with my Vichianas and my Vichians, they're pretty much all black birds. And when you're studying the flock when they're younger and you're trying to identify, you know, your best birds and maybe troublesome birds that, uh, you know, just isn't on step with the other birds, it's missing the cue on the hard hook turns. Uh, you, I can see these whistles and I can identify, you know, oh, well, you know, oh, well, that, that's that cock bird with the blue whistle on his back. He's, he's causing troubles in some manner. And when he comes down, maybe check him, see if he's thin, maybe warm him. You know, try to figure out what's, what's wrong with him uh, and get it corrected so that he's not uh, messing up the 
kit style. Actually, these are kind of cool. Kind of the glittery, glittery colors. So anyhow, um, I'll go get some real live birds and put some whistles on, and that way you can see. Uh, I do I do trim a few uh, over the tail coverts, two two fails, tail feathers in particular, not tail feathers, but covert feathers that ride over the tail because uh, they kind of interfere with with the whistle. It doesn't doesn't hurt the bird or anything, but I do trim those as well as I do uh, carefully take a razor blade and I trim the inside of the shaft on the two deck feathers just where the, the whistle is going to be seated. I don't, uh, I don't bother trimming it on this outside at all. Sometimes if I'm real anal I might do a little eighth inch on the outside where this wire tie you know, fits in that notch. You know, just to make the tail feathers uh, lay nicely on the bird so there's not any interference. So anyways, I'll go get some birds and, and get to that and you can see how the uh, whistles are put on a, a bird. Okay, I'm back. Uh, subject in hand. That I'm going to put the pigeon whistle on. And normally I have a towel that I put in my lap. And then, come on girl, it's okay, okay. And what I'll do is I'll overlap the towel over the pigeon's head so that they're not looking around trying to get away. And then uh, wings, wings go under the tail and are held by the, your fingers just like you do when you hold a pigeon's feet. Keep keep the primaries out of the way. And as I was saying, there are, there are two, two feathers that I like to get rid of. They're a little bit in the way sometimes. And that's this one. I just go, go up close to the base, nip it off. And here's the other one here. And go up within a quarter inch of the base, nip it off, and that gives me a little bit of clearance. A little bit of saliva never hurts to push these feathers out of the way so you can see what you're doing. So then what I do is I take, I take a sharp razor blade, make sure you're, you're clear of the pigeon's rump and where that whistle is going to be seated. I'm just going to shave off the inside of that shaft on both feathers about a half inch. And clear that out. Snip that out so it's clear. And then I'm going to take my whistle and I'm going to set it in there. And I'm going to see, you know, feel how far is that up against her rump and back off about an eighth inch. And then if I'm really anal, I'll go in and I'll shave this outside where the cable tie is going to go through where that notch is. So I'll clear that out like so. And take my cable tie, slide it under. Make sure you're not getting any of the under tail coverts tangled up in there. And I'm going to pull it tight. At this point, you want to swing it down and underneath the tail, so that box, that box section of the wire tie is uh, underneath the feathers, so that the, these other side feathers uh, sit firmly. And also remember, left as I'm looking at left tail feather on top of the right. So I'm going to feel where I've got that seated. That feels pretty comfortable to me. I'm going to support the whistle. I'm going to pull that wire tie down. Check the feathers again. And that looks pretty good to me. A little, little tighter, but like I said before, you don't want to tighten it so much that you compress the shaft of the feathers and make them uh, cant outwards. 
So that looks good to me. So then just come to the underneath side and clip off that wire tie at the base. Make sure you don't have any undertail coverts in there. And that's that's really it. Kind of mussed up her feathers. And so that's that's the way it seats on the back of a pigeon. Like I said, that this assembly will stay on for the whole season until she uh, molts out her tail feathers and drops that. So there you have it, and I'll I'll try to get the video out on how to make the whistles uh, hopefully this week. This is a Vichiana, a gray, gray Vichiana, beautiful bird. I've got the blacks and I've got the grays. There you go.